You play to win the game. Hello? You play to win the game. You don't play to just play it. Here we go! That's the great thing about sports. You play to win. And I don't care if you don't have any wins. You go play to win. When you start telling me it doesn't matter, then retire. Get out. Because it matters. Well, good game day morning, friends. Mark Holmes here with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. This is what we work for all week long getting ready for game day it is week 16 in the nfl season and right now shit is real this is the chance for the dallas cowboys to take back all that they lost last week in the drubbing that they took from the buffalo bills last week was butt ugly i think the cowboys were full of themselves after going through a rough stretch walking into a desperate buffalo bills team and now they have a chance to literally destroy the narrative that they can't beat winning teams on the road this is a chance for Dak Prescott to get back into the MVP conversation and a chance for the Dallas Cowboys to put more pressure on the Philadelphia Eagles that are imploding and I hope you guys will join us here for our live stream we'll be starting out at one o'clock today uh, with the early games rolling right into the Dallas Cowboys versus the Miami Dolphins in Miami but wait, there's more. So we had all assumed that it was automatic that Tariq Hill was going to be playing today. But it's actually going to be a game time decision. Uh, according to the Miami Dolphins, uh, Mike Farello has posted the op optimism of, Mike, uh, of Hill will be able to suit up. And a decision on the status will be made after pregame warmups. So here's my thing. Here's my thing right here. If you're telling me that the decision has not been made and will be a game time decision, that tells me you're not 100%. Right or wrong? If you were 100%, if you were good to go, if there were no issues, it would be you're playing. If it is a game time decision, he may play, and I think he really will. But maybe he's 90%, 80%, 75%. Who knows? We'll have to wait and see how it works out when he gets out on the field. For us, we know Tyron Smith is out. Tyron Smith will not be playing. Um, I'm at the point of thinking that maybe the Cowboys look at trying to uh, basically set him until playoffs. Keep him in bubble wrap until the game. <clears throat> For the Cowboys... We must stop the run. Now, again, the Miami Dolphins, they're having their injury issues. In fact, you can look at this and say at this time of year, everybody has got a lot of injury issues. We'll see how all that plays out. But I don't know about you, but I am totally ready for having a good game. Um, last night, we ended up seeing the Buffalo Bills survive uh, against the Chargers and showing you that the, it's, it's comical to me because you have the flavor of the week. You know, this past week after Buffalo beat us, it ended up being that nobody wants to face the Buffalo Bills. Nobody wants to face the Bills. The Bills, you know, they're a hot team right now, and they're great and everything else. They finally got it. Well, they looked like the Buffalo Bills of a few weeks ago that literally were just a bad team. Fortunately, they were going against a much worse team in the Chargers with an interim head coach, and Kellen Moore is the offensive coordinator, and their number one quarterback yeah, Justin Herbert, gone for the season. And yet they struggled and still turned the ball over, Josh Allen, against that team. So I'm not sure that they are as great as to say. You know, again, this is the NFL, and from one week to the next, you can look great. And things are forgotten rather quickly with other teams except the Dallas Cowboys. So we'll see how that goes. This week, the surprise dark horse for the Super Bowl is the Rams, believe it or not, after the Rams starting out uh, not playing really well and getting their lunch handed to them by the Dallas Cowboys. Now, all of a sudden, they're the flavor of the week. And then, of course, tomorrow we have the Philadelphia Eagles going against the New York Giants, and hopefully the power of Rashid will help them get the, help the New York Giants get a victory. And then, of course, we have the big game, San Francisco 
going against the Baltimore Ravens. So there's a lot of action, a lot that's going to be going on, and it's Christmas Eve. Merry Christmas to everybody else. Happy holidays. Feliz Navidad and all of the above uh, for you guys. And um, hopefully it'll be a great Christmas for the Cowboys. Now, I got a lot to do to get set up for the games. I got a few more things I want to do here at the Red Brick House before uh, the game start. So I'm going to get right to it. And here's a little preview of the Cowboys versus the Bills. Here's the thing. Last week, we faced a, Bal a Buffalo Bills team that knew if they lost to the Cowboys, their season is over. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. That just would be over. Now, we're facing a team, the Miami Dolphins, that they have us, Baltimore, and then the Bills. And it's feasible. They lose this game. They lose the next two. They don't make the playoffs. So you're going to be facing another team that is playing with their lives depending on it because their lives depend on it. And so this is what I talked about a few weeks ago. Since the Seattle game, I said, from here on out, it's playoffs. It is playoffs for us. Playoff seeding, play, you know, where we're going to be playing, if we're going to be playing at home, if we're number two seed, if we're number five seed. All these games matter that much. Uh, let's listen in this morning. Got the Cowboys, they have the Ravens, they have the Bills. Buffalo's next two opponents, meanwhile, have a combined record of 8 and 20. So because of this, there's a 62% chance the Bills and Dolphins play for the division week 18. So Miami needs this. Meanwhile, the Cowboys, they lead the NFC East for this moment. But the Eagles have the easiest remaining schedule in the entire league, a 62% chance mm -hmm. to win out. If both teams win out, the Eagles would most likely win the NFC East based on tiebreakers. So Dallas that also goes way down desperately list. needs this win on the road. And here's Micah Parsons talking about his team's road mentality. It's a mindset of how you approach it. I think, uh, you know, when you're at home, you're comfortable. You're, you know, you kind of do what you do. Um, but when you're in a road, you're mm -hmm. in a new space, you're in a new area, you're in a new area, you're in just a new environment. And uh, the mindset is when the Lions, you know, Roman, does he take over the land or does he die? And last week we, got, we died, so we got to take over some land this week. That's a fascinating way to put it, and I guess it does make some sense. All right, once and for all. I've spent all of this week, I didn't have you here Monday to help me. I'm fighting with Rex and Dan, and I had no voice of reason with me. <laughs> what is this home road thing? Everyone is making such a big deal about the Cowboys on the road. I watched that game. That game could have been played on Jupiter. Yeah, oh, and, and they would have had the ball run down their throat. It's, how much of a difference is it making? I do, I, I do not think it's where they play. I believe it's how the other team plays. It's how the opponent approaches the Dallas Cowboys. And what I mean by that is, you is the, the Dallas games. Cowboys aren't going to fight back if you punch them in the mouth at your house or at their house. You can knock on their door, and if you're willing to bludgeon them at their front doorstep, you can do that. When you look at the Arizona Cardinals, the San Francisco 49ers, the Buffalo Bills, they all attack this Dallas Cowboy defense, which loves to play sub package, which is add an extra defensive back by running the football. They all got their linemen headed downfield and very much like a team that has not won a championship in 30 years, who people still buy all their jerseys and allow them to be the most Man, he's profitable just franchise us. in the entire world. They're front runners. And so the Dallas Cowboys have to understand that as Michael Parsons continues to say, we have to go take land. We have to go be a lion. Well, the thing <laughs> that the lion does when it's time to face the other lion from the other pack, yeah. and we're trying to figure out who's going to be with the Cubs, who's going to go let the women hunt all day so they can sleep all day Damn. and eat the spoils, <laughs> right? You got to go out and fight. And when this team has to go out and fight, they have not done it. And so now we have to see what they can do against the Miami Dolphins, but it doesn't matter where they play. Well, I'm thinking of you, Bart, as I'm watching that game, because you're always the guy who's going to be willing to stand there on the train tracks. I, I hear you say all yeah. that big, dumb, rough, yeah, tough linebacker there. stuff. Yeah. And I don't Did you call it dumb? It. No, no, big, tough. Oh, it's tough. <laughs> big, tough linebacker stuff. Right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> who's going to stand there on the train track? <laughs> Look, one man's tough is another man's whatever. Okay. Yeah. But, but you know what I'm saying. And, and like, they didn't, they didn't that isn't their strength. I'm not suggesting right. they're soft. That's not what they do well. So if the Dolphins start doing that same thing to them, can Dallas's defense hold up? I don't think so. And it's only one adjustment that I think wow. they can make. Nobody they thinks they can hold up. Or, or, or ask themselves, is Marquise Bell better mm -hmm. you know, at what he's doing? Or should we bring in maybe a backup DN and mm -hmm. put Michael Parsons back in the middle so we can't be out physical 
downhill. Remember, Parkins comes from playing inside linebacker. That's where he started from. He's very comfortable I think there. that's the you dumbest idea that, you know, out Dolphin there. running backs will bludgeon you to death. We saw it last week against the Jets. We understand that, remember, that whole San Francisco style of running mm-hmm. you know, was was de- de- devised by McDonald's. McDaniels. Yeah, he's, 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 a, run, he's a run yeah. specialist. He, yeah. a, that's what he did for yeah. San Francisco. So he's going to find ways to be able to exploit, you know, Marquise Bell, who's a lighter guy. You know, and you can't hide him. You can't hide linebackers, right? You can't hide away from physicality. So you have to consider maybe taking him off the field, bringing the extra D in, and using Lawrence as the, you know, to the strong side of the defense, knowing they're going to run open and put Michael Parsons sideline to sideline. Very, come down here. Help me with one thing quickly here, though, because what Dan Orlovsky was explaining yesterday, yeah. we'll get the guys in, is like the, the, they'll, they'll kill you then with those like screen passes. They'll throw them out to the side to Tyree Kill and Jalen no, Waddle no. and all of that. Like they're going to beat you with Miami can beat you with their speed too. Yes, they can. But if you're going to, but to do that, you got to try and stop them with a light box. You right. much mm-hmm. rather have a real inside linebacker that's 240 pounds that can go sideline to sideline. Yeah. When Michael Parsons is on you one side, on you can end. get away from them you and need take him out of the game by running away from him. You see, the best way to help the Dallas Cowboy defense is Dak Prescott. Last mm-hmm. week, Josh Allen completed seven passes. They scored 30 points. So what they have to do is if Dallas can score and make Miami throw the ball part of the time, that allowed Dallas to do what they do best, which is rush the passer. Mm-hmm. To R.C.'s point, beyond that, it's all physics. They are so light between Marquise Bell, Damone Clark, that – Yep, Miami, even with backup offensive linemen, will be able to run the ball. The other thing, as Hembo reminded me, is two is second the league in completions for screens and yard screens to what you're alluding to, Greeny. That's what they want to do. Those are long handoffs. Mm-hmm. The way you get Miami out of their comfort zone is you have to move the ball on offense. And if Dak Prescott, there even if go. they have a B game, that's going to allow Dallas to do what they do best, which is rush the passer. Yeah, it's interesting. There's a couple, there's a couple of injury issues, right? Jonathan Hankins, the big D tackle, mm-hmm. missed last week's game. Doesn't look like he's going to play in this one. That's a big factor in their run defense, obviously. Tyron Smith, the left tackle, hasn't practiced yet this week. I, I would, I'd feel, if I were Dallas, I'd feel more comfortable if I saw him on the practice field today. I find what Bart's saying fascinating. People forget about Micah Parsons that he was drafted as a linebacker, right? He's been, he's been such a dominant edge rusher. Do, do they risk taking him out of that position because he can absolutely play that? He can Silent absolutely do what you need him to do to help you uh, aug- or augment your run defense in the absence of your, your defensive tackle depth. So I'm interested to see what Dan Quinn does because it's got to be different than what it was last week. And, and then the other piece of it, to, to what Mike T is saying, for the Cowboys, it would be awfully nice to play from in front instead of behind. Last week, it, it, everything got away from them so yeah, quickly right, yeah. in that game. It didn't feel like they were being dominated, but they were losing, like, I think it was 14 nothing yeah. or 10 nothing before you could even uh, open your eyes. So how do they do that? How does Dak well, play? I, 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 think, I, think the, I think the first thing was it wasn't about Dak and to why they were trailing. It was because they couldn't stop couldn't the run. Stop it was the because run. they couldn't get – off of the football field. And if you look at the Miami Dolphins, they're second in first down efficiency to the San Francisco 49ers. And Michael Parsons can't rush if you don't put him right. in positions to rush. And the Buffalo Bills never allowed them to get there. And offensively, I think sometimes you become so that dependent because yeah. he was playing extremely well. Well, you have to understand, you have to answer that physicality with physicality. The Buffalo Bills were driving people, were driving linebackers, driving deep yeah. tackles all the way to the safety they were. position. You don't think that gets an offensive line fired up? And then now on the other side, you're backpedaling, trying to protect Dak Prescott. And so Mike McCarthy is going to have to make a decision. Are we going to call plays? Are we going to scheme to make our team aggressive, to have our team in an attacking position? Mm-hmm. And if they don't, they can find themselves in the same difficulty they this did last true. week but against the Dolphins. Let me put the picks up on the screen. Yeah. Bart, go. I mean, the crazy part is, right, the Buffalo Bills play defense based off of a um, sub package as well. But because Dallas doesn't have the physical run game, they couldn't give them the same dope. Buffalo Bills but they're is taking, base. They're based the same, yeah, they're, they're based the same way. Yep. But because of lack of physicality and the brand of run oh, game, okay. they couldn't give the Dallas Cowboys, couldn't do the same thing to the Bills that the Bills were doing. Can they them. do it to Miami, though? I mean, the, the, on the difference here, can the Cowboys do a little bit of that against Miami? Or do they need Dak flinging it to C.D. Lamb and whoever? Well, it's Dak slinging to CeeDee Lamb, sitting out there with Jalen Ramsey on top of him. It's not going to be trouble. a great recipe. That's why they got to find a way to get him in the backfield, get him in the slot, get him away from Jalen Ramsey. That's why it's Jake Ferguson and Tony Pollard in the passing game. That's going to be the key to this Cowboy offense. But you, you have, have to establish a run. The more the quarterback puts the ball up, all it takes is one interception to change the game. They get behind the sticks, and that whole game plan has to go out the window. 
I, I would have picked Dallas if it was in Dallas. I think it's an important game for both teams. But I think all year, what's been true about Dallas, we talk about, well, have they proven anything to you? Have they, Dallas is trying to prove stuff to itself. Yeah. Right? Like they still don't. You talk no, about having won the Super Bowl it. in 30 years. Like they, they believe they're that good. But they have to show it. And this is another opportunity. Win a road game against a first-place mm-hmm. team that needs the game. I think we're talking about Dallas differently next week. And more importantly, I think they feel differently about themselves next I, week. I, just, I, I agree 100% because this is the opportunity to put everybody on notice that we are not what you guys think we are, that we are truly a legitimate team. All right, good people, we got to get ready for the games. And I am Mark Holmes, and I appreciate each and every one of you guys. And I will see you guys soon.